Our country wasn't founded on the right of happiness, but rather the right to pursue happiness. That right is what makes America the greatest nation the world has ever known. Yeah, ladies, this is a lot of firepower going on right here. It's an awful lot. It's Avert just... your eyes. Ready? All right, here we go. That's a dirty job, but somebody had to do it. Hey, folks, I'm John Rich, and welcome to The Pursuit. The people who make America truly great are generally not the ones you see on TV, or the ones who make the most money, or who have the most prestigious positions. On the contrary, the folks who make America what it is and what it can be are the everyday working class who put the key in the ignition, go to work, and break their backs day in and day out to keep our country moving. Mike Rowe has become known as a name you can trust, a voice that speaks the truth, and a pair of hands that feel right at home inside of an old pair of work gloves. Now get ready to get dirty. His passion for people who work hard and do the jobs others aren't willing to do led to the creation of a long-lived show called Dirty Jobs that has taken him to all 50 states where he's completed over 300 different jobs. A true American original and a man who's not afraid of a hard day's work, here's Mike Rowe. Mike, welcome to the show, sir. Man, I'm, I'm right on the verge of blushing, John. Good to have you, man. It's, it's great so to be cool had. to sit with you and talk. America loves you. I don't know anybody that doesn't like Mike Rowe. Well, I can provide you with a short list of names. <laughs> it, but, would, um, it would be very short. I would hope so. But it's great to see you again. It's been a while. I knew right out of the gate uh, we, we were going to be buddies because we think the same way. We both believe in hard work. We both believe in stories, too. We I love mean, stories. Your stories, of course, are come with music. Most of mine don't but but the idea that there's a beginning and the middle and an end mm -hmm. i don't care how long or short the story is you tell a good story your show tells good stories and that's it's a privilege to be here so i wanted to ask you where did your respect of hard work and people that work hard come from i wonder what it was like being little mikey Rowe <laughs> at your house were your parents really hard workers they were. They still are, in fact. They're uh, in their mid-late 80s now. They're living back in Baltimore. I got super lucky because I grew up uh, on a little farm in Baltimore County at the end of a dirt road on the top of a hill. And we had some land. Well, we actually had access to land. It wasn't really ours. The state owned it, mm -hmm. you know. But there was a big woods and there was a pasture. And so we grew some food and we raised some animals. But most of all, my grandfather and my grandmom lived right next door, about 100 yards away. Mm -hmm. So I really grew up with two sets of parents. Everybody worked hard, but they were different. My mom and dad taught school. My grandfather, he was a tradesman, a born tradesman. He had the chip, right? I mean, he could take your watch apart, put it together blindfolded. Right. He could build a house without a blueprint. He was that guy. How did he learn how to do all that? I don't know, because he only went to the seventh grade. And then he went to work. And if you needed something fixed, if you needed a foundation poured, if you needed a church built, you know, he mm -hmm. built the church I grew up in, my pop did. And so even though he only went to the seventh grade, by the time he was 30, he was a master electrician, but he could also plumb, he could build, he mm -hmm. could weld, he could, to answer your first <laughs> question, living in the shadow of that guy mm -hmm. and working as his apprentice as a young boy. Well, I was gonna ask, did he let you tag along all the time? He did. My dad was actually his apprentice. My dad was a school teacher and he got more of the handy gene than I did. And when I found out from you when you were at the house that uh, that you sang opera, Rigoletto, right? I did. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think people are gonna go, he did what? I mean, tell me about singing opera. It was about 1982, right? It was 1982 and I, I thought maybe the entertainment industry would be fun. And because I didn't get the handy gene that I thought I would inherit from my granddad and because I wasn't able to follow in his footsteps, uh, he advised me to get a different toolbox. And so I did. I, I learned to sing and I took some acting courses and I took some writing courses and I, I, I tried to figure out a different way to look at my at my vocation, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, the opera was just a, to be honest, it was a dodge. I was trying to get into the Screen Actors Guild, trying to get my union card so I could work in TV. 
I couldn't get any agent to represent me because I wasn't in the union, and I couldn't get in the union because I didn't have an agent representing me. And right. Anyhow, if you can fake your way into the opera, you can <laughs> buy your union card. How do you fake your way into the opera, though? Seriously. What it did was, I, uh, I went to the library, and I told the librarian, I need to memorize the shortest aria there is to audition for the Baltimore Opera. Okay. And she said, well, you want Puccini. And I said, all right. So I take the album, and I listen to the coat aria, which is only two and a half minutes long, maybe three minutes. And uh, I didn't know what the words meant. It was Italian. But I memorized it, walked around Baltimore with the headphones on, listening right. to Samuel Ramey sing, Vecchia senti il resto al pianto scende re sacria monte o devi wow le me grazia recevi i have no idea what it means grazie mille eh i just memorized the sounds that's incredible i, I went and i sang it as loud as i could and Bill Yanutzi was the music director back then. He said, uh, Mr. Rowe, you have no idea what you're saying, do you? I said, no, I, I do not. <laughs> I do not. But they let me in. They needed young guys with low voices, and I checked both boxes.